Hello students, looking at current affairs for 15th November, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these 15, we we'll look at them in detail. The first one, Supreme Court dismisses pleas to review Rafael ruling, raps Rahul, so that is Rahul Gandhi. So this is three judge bench of the Supreme Court led by Chief Justice of India Ranjan Gagoi which dismissed petition seeking a review of its 14 December 2018 judgment upholding the purchase of 36 Rafale fighter aircrafts. So you should know about this Rafale fighter jets deal. It was acknowledged by the and it was stated by the Supreme Court itself that we are dealing with a contract for aircraft pending before different governments for quite some time. So you should know the timeline when we started uh, you know, initiating this requirement of these fighter aircrafts. It was a demand a requirement of 126 fighter jets. And the tender, global tender was floated for it in August 2007. So that since then you can see there were trials, extensive field trials for various uh, contenders like American F-18, Super Hornet, F-16, Super Viper, then Swedish Gripen, Russian MiG-35, even Rafael of France, Eurofighters, uh, Typhoon. So all these companies and their fighter jets, they had their... Uh, extensive field trials undertaken and finally in 2012 two contenders were selected and so you know after field trials means they were, after looking at their performance two were selected and then commercial bids were opened and it was Rafael which got the deal so it was uh, the salt the French company and negotiations started with it but the negotiations deadlocked because in this 126 fighter jets what we wanted was make in India make in India independence means all 126 will not be purchased by India out of 126 108 should be manufactured in India itself by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited which is the defense public sector undertaking of India so the fell actually refused to take guarantee for the fighter jets which will be manufactured in India and also it attempted to hike the price so that is why the negotiations were deadlocked. So after 2012, this was the scenario. An Indian Air Force required fighter aircrafts and this was the deadlock. So what was done is a government to government agreement was signed. So this is again the same timeline given here from 2007 to even 2011 where Rafael Euro fighters were, uh, no, were taken as the two contenders. And finally, you know, Rafael gave the lowest bid and Hall and Rafael, even Sol Rafael signed a work share agreement also for 108 aircrafts in 2014. But then uh, the deadlock as such resulted in 2015 suddenly government announcing a new deal that it will buy 36 Rafael fighter jets directly, direct purchase, no make in India from France. So this was announced in 2015. So this is there and then you can see in 2016 this intergovernment agreement was also signed. So, for 36 Rafael fighter jets. So, this is the deal which has been questioned. 2018, a PIL was filed in Supreme Court seeking investigation into this deal. And center, the Supreme Court said in December 14, 2018 judgment that there is no irregularity in purchase of these Rafael fighter jets. And it dismissed all petitions for court-monitored investigation. So, and now what is in news is that an appeal uh, was filed for review of this judgment. So that has been dismissed. No review will be undertaken. So bench also closed a criminal contempt petition filed by BJP leader against Congress MP Rahul Gandhi for wrongly attributing the phrase Chokidar Chorhe to the court. So one of the judges on the bench said that issue of registering an FIR and a consequent investigation by CBI can be undertaken. So the CBI can decide on it. Uh, no. So, there is no need to reopen the judgment of the Supreme Court in this matter. So, petitioners actually had uh, argued that the government had concealed crucial facts and misled the Supreme Court into giving favorable verdict. Because in that ruling, it was said that the CAG has submitted its report. Rather, the CAG had not submitted its report. So, interpretation went wrong because CAG submitted its report and it's placed before the parliament. But uh, in this case, CAG had not yet submitted the report. And the government had said it has submitted a redacted report. How does it know what CAG is going to submit is, in, is a question raised to because CAG is an independent body. It's Control and Auditor General of India, an independent body. So this was one aspect. The Supreme Court ruled in favor of the government saying that CAG has also passed the Rafael deal. So though CAG passed it, but later after the Supreme Court verdict. So that's the case.
Supreme Court said that uh, you know if uh, CBI uh, has, can register a case, it was Justice K.M. Joseph on the three judge bench, the third judge on the bench, who said that uh, suggested that CBI should take prior sanction and register an FIR in the case if they found any material in the complaint. As such, the minister, the Congress and uh, ministers members complained if there is any material in it, they can take prior sanction. But then prior sanction which the CBI has to take is from the government. So, how will government give prior sanction to investigate itself is also a question. But uh, uh, Justice Joseph says that CBI should work independently. It is also another question because CBI is uh, accused of being a caged parrot, you know, in the hands of the government in power. So that's the scenario. So court allowed government's application for correction of certain factual portions because government admitted that some certain factual portions need to be corrected. So court allowed that they can correct the portions or as such. And but Supreme Court dismissed any review of its judgment. It said that what has been misconstrued is only what has been done and what was to be done. So earlier it was said it has been done. CAG report has been shared, but CAG report was not shared till then. So, to convey the notion that CAG report on Rafael purchase was already before Public Accounts Committee of Parliament, when it was not. And government claimed that a redacted portion of the report was placed before the Parliament and was in public domain, which was not the case. So, also, the question regarding this is corruption charges and the allegation is on pricing, pricing of the Rafael fighter jets. But uh, Supreme Court says that it was not the function of the court to determine the prices. These are technical matters, they cannot look into it. And if there is any substance to the allegation, then CBI can be opposed. So this is what the Supreme Court has said, that we decline to once again embark on an elaborate exercise of analyzing each clause, perusing what may be different opinions, then taking a call where the final decision should or should not have been taken in such a technical matter. So Supreme Court says we are not uh, going to adjudicate in this matter. And they have dismissed the review petition. So this is the whole case of the fail fighter jets. Also, the controversy is regarding the offset clause in this deal, which has been cited. Fifty percent offset clause and reliance has been taken as the offset partner. So it was said that uh, you know, former prime, former president of France himself had admitted that they were not given any option. It was Rafael. It was Rafael was suggested to take uh, reliance as offset partner. So that was a statement given to the government says that there was there is nothing uh, mandatory. The Rafael can select its own offset partner. So all these aspects are there. Also, the pricing is much different, but then pricing is different because it is loaded aircraft. So fighter jet loaded with arms equipment. So that's why the price would increase. Then this is CBI can probe Rafael deal. So as we saw, the third judge, Justice K.M. Joseph on the three judge bench, in a separate opinion said that CBI can look into the matter with prior sanction from the government. So this, it said, uh, can be undertaken by CBI because under the Lalita Kumari judgment of the Supreme Court also, Supreme Court had held that uh, registration of FIR is mandatory if the information discloses uh, you know, commission of a cognizable offense. So if it's a cognizable offense, FIR should be registered and if it's not, and but there is any substance, then preliminary inquiry can be undertaken. You know? So, and a closure report can be signed. So if preliminary inquiry indicates, ends, the close, uh, ends in closing the complaint, there is no substance in the complaint, then closure report has to be uh, in, in, you know, given with the reasons why the uh, complaint has been, uh, you know, preliminary inquiry has been closed and the reason should be supplied to the complaint. And it stated that CBI has to act independently of the government of the day. Government cannot speak on behalf of the CBI. So this is what Justice Joseph says, but that is not what actually happens. So it's a futile exercise because sanctioning authority, as we said, CBI should be sanctioned to undertake investigation. Sanctioning authority is the government itself in anti-corruption case under Section 17A of the Prevention of Corruption Act. So how will it give prior sanction for such allegations of corruption? It would not. So this is there. So this is the entire chronology of events in the contempt case also, because contempt of court case had been initiated against Rahul Gandhi, which now has been quashed. So Supreme Court had uh, held Chokidar is a thief. This is what Rahul Gandhi had said, but that is not what the Supreme Court said. So, this is there. so that case has also now been 
closed but uh, closed the contempt proceedings but it has rebuked mr gandhi mr gandhi is rahul gandhi had also apologized to the court for this and this is regarding the lalita kumari case in which cbi has to act independently how an fir has to be registered if there is a cognizable offense you know and if it is not then preliminary inquiry must be done to verify if the offense is cognizable so that whole thing was this lalita kumari case of 2008 to uh, judge bench of the supreme court then next is rahul renews demand for jpc investigation so again this third news related to rafael deal only so former congress president Rahul Gandhi has said that the separate opinion of the Supreme Court Judge Justice K M Joseph in Rafael case has opened a door for an investigation into Rafael fighter aircraft deal, and he demanded a joint parliamentary committee to investigate. But again, who will set up the joint parliamentary committee? Is the government in power? It has the say. So again, B J P would not do that. So that's the whole thing. So government should carry. The Congress chief spokesperson dared the government to carry out an open investigation. then next is sabri mala case larger bench to decide role of courts in religion so this is regarding sabri mala case so just as we saw above about the rafael deal a review petition has been filed in that for the supreme court to review its judgment a review petition has also been filed in the sabri mala case you should know about this case the sabri mala ruling of the supreme court came on september 28 2018 in which supreme court upheld the right of women aged between 10 and 50 to enter and worship the sabri mala temple in kerala where they were not allowed to enter so the women in age 10 to 50 are considered in fertile age group so they menstruate and menstruating women were not allowed to enter the sanctum sanctorum so but the supreme court ruling actually allowed women of irrespective of the age group all women and to so they can enter the sanctum sanctorum and so this was the ruling so now a review petition has been filed writ petitions have been filed in the supreme court so five judge bench of the supreme court led by cgi is hearing this matter but it has kept this review petition in abeyance means it has kept it it has kept it in pending till a larger bench of seven judges delivers an authoritative pronouncement on exact role of non epistolary court means non religious court How, what role can it play in deciding whether a particular practice is essential or integral to religion or not So a larger bench will first look into this general question of whether what role can court play, and then Sabri Mala review will be undertaken. So it has framed a series of questions for the larger bench, and these are you can see these three specifically mentioned here. So these are whether a court can probe if a practice is essential to a religion or not, or should this question be left to the respective religious heads? So of course, religious heads they would say every practice of the religion is essential. so whether court can probe in this matter or not is a question which has to be answered second is should essential religious practices be accorded constitutional protection under article 26 of the constitution that is freedom to manage religious affairs of course if it's just a, if it's called an essential religious practice it cannot be accorded constitutional protection just for it if it violates other provisions of the constitution and the basic features of the constitution of basic human rights and third is what is the permissible extent of judicial recognition of a court Uh, a judicial recognition a court should give to pils filed by people who do not belong to a religion of which practices are under the stamp so if somebody is somebody is practicing but they are not practicing the religion so what judicial recognition should such pils be get but pils are public interest litigation in public interest so people who do not belong to the religion even if they are filing a pil in public interest in general interest what why should the court does not recognize it so these are the kind of questions these three questions which have been put forth before a larger bench and then once a larger bench answers them then uh, rules on them then supreme court will hear the sabri mala review so even today's editorial says in the hindu that uh, supreme court should not have taken this route this is a general question because supreme court says such questions on religious practices is coming from all religions from christianity from jainism from islam or muslims you know even muslims entry in dargah etc so it wants a general ruling coming first and then sabri mala review been undertaken but then sabri mala review is for reversing the supreme court judgment and there is no way that this judgment should be reversed so it could have dismissed this review petition too, too but supreme court has not done that but though there is no stay also means the earlier ruling of supreme court is continues and women are allowed entry into uh, sabri mala temple presently though there is stiff opposition on the ground so justice roentgen f nariman and dy chandrachur two judges of the bench joined to deliver a stinging dissent also in this matter 
they dismissed the majority decision now preference to a larger bench there is no need so no, they were part of this constitution bench also that delivered the original judgment of the supreme court in september 2018 justice nariman wrote a dissent saying that the constitution bench was the last word on the interpretation of the constitution five judge constitution bench and once the constitution bench laid down a law both legislature and executive were bound to comply it they should not look into what is the ground scenario and you know, so it's sad spectacle of unarmed women being you know who are exercising their fundamental right to worship being quoted in this exercise so this is the this has raised grave issues of gender bias on account of physiological or biological factor functions common to all women so justice indu malhotra on the five judge bench also she was the lone dissenting judge in 2018 judgment of the supreme court in sabrimala case had talked about threats of pils being used by third parties to tinker with religious beliefs but this is unfounded because you know they have they have vested interests if they come to the court also court has the power to turn them down so such pils even if they come up there is no harm supreme court has the discretion to dismiss those those pils so this is the case present here even the present editorial speaks of how religious practice of genit genital mutilation is also being clubbed together in this case which is completely against human rights and should be forthwith you know female genital mutilation should be forthwith dismissed it cannot be allowed as an essential religious practice too but that's what the supreme court is doing now putting it on a larger bench which will answer the questions and it is put raising questions in such a way that court can it can it uh, you know interfere in religion is there also the fundamental right to religion under the constitution is not an absolute right there are uh, restrictions on it too that is there so this is entire sabrimala case uh, timeline as such too it was in 1991 when kerala high court upheld uh, uh, an age old restriction on women so women restriction was upheld by kerala high court in 1991 then in 2006 uh, you know uh, this case came forth so when women entry signs were found so this case came in 2008 a pil was filed by kerala gov then government of kerala questioning the ban of entry on entry of women in sabrimala and on this ruling came you can see in 2018 when supreme court allowed entry of women into sabrimala so this was the ruling and this was a dissenting judge justice indu malhotra the next is man faces life term for bomb hoax call so nia national investigation agency has registered a case under the stringent anti hijacking act of 2016 against 28 year old man who allegedly made a hoax call to delhi airport in august 2019 to stop his wife from leaving the country for work he claimed in the call that he she was a suicide bomber so this is second such case been investigated by nia under anti hijacking act of 2006 which prescribes life imprisonment for making false calls of bomb threats so In other case, you know, for this August case was in June 2019, when special NIA court in Ahmedabad sentenced a businessman to life term and imposed a fine of five crores for placing a hoax hijack note on Jet Airways plane in October 2017. So this is the stringent anti-hijacking act of 2016. So there also he had committed this crime, uh, you know, to force Jet to shut its Delhi operations so that his girlfriend would, who worked in airlines in Delhi office, would come to meet. This Anti-Hijacking Act of 2016 has replaced the earlier Act, which was of 1982. The next is ED arrests former Ranpaxi promoter. So Enforcement Directorate, which looks into money laundering cases too, it has arrested former Ranpaxi uh, promoter Malvinder Singh and then Chairman and Managing Director of Religare Enterprises Limited, Sunil Gurmani. So they are arrested in money laundering case. So you should know that uh, Religare. Uh, 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 Religa Enterprises Limited. This is the uh, entity, and uh, uh, RFL, which is Religa Filmvest Limited, was a subsidiary of uh, is a subsidiary of RFL. So what the two are accused of is that they have already been arrested in October 2019 by Economic Offences Wing of Delhi Police. So they have alleged the allegation against them, along with three others, is that they diverted uh, funds from RFL. And losses to a tune of rupees two thousand three hundred ninety-seven crore were involved. So, RFL is subsidiary of RELT. So, they accused 
uh, they were accused of putting RFL in poor financial condition by disbursing loans to firms controlled by them, which had no financial standing, and they willfully defaulted on the payments. So RFL had the money. This money was loaned out to other companies uh, associated with these uh, brothers, like Malvinder Singh, and uh, then uh, they were not paying that to RFL. So this willful default took place. So in this money laundering case, they have been arrested. Then next is India's request for Facebook users' data rising sharply. So Indian government's request for user data from Facebook has increased nearly 37% in the first half of 2019. And uh, total queries are at 22,684 queries, which is second highest globally just after US. US government had 50,714 requests to Facebook for data of users. So this is transparency report of Facebook itself. It said that uh, for Indian government, it has produced some data in 54% of the cases. So this is Jan to June 2019 report. Facebook also talked of internet disru disruptions, 17 internet disruptions in around 70 countries, 17 countries, and India topped this list also with 40 internet disruptions. So this is the data. How Indian government has been making requests increasing number of requests coming from Indian government for data of users. So first comes USA, then India, then UK and Germany. In China, Facebook is not allowed, so there is no such question. Then next is, ARPS donations nearly doubled in 2018-19, says poll panel report. So election commission report says that in run-up to 2019 Lok Sabha elections, Ahmadmi party income from donations nearly doubled. So from 10.61 crores, it became 19.17 crores, donations and contributions. While Samajwadi Party's annual account report shows that their income decreased. But compared to BJP, this is nothing. This is like uh, a very small fraction of what they get as donations. Then next is NGT panel to hold meet on solid waste management. So National Green Tribunal it has uh, given orders and the first meeting of NGT appointed committee on municipal solid waste management will now be held on November 19. So this committee comprises of representatives from Niti Aayog, Ministry of Urban and Housing Affairs, Ministry of Jal Shakti, Ministry of the National Mission for Clean Ganga, Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change and even Central Pollution Control Board Chairman. So this committee, NGT appointed committee will look into municipal solid waste management. Because according to data provided by Central Pollution Control Board, there are more than 4,000 legacy waste dump sites across the country that require remediation under the relevant solid waste management rules. So this will unlock the land occupied by such waste sites and which will which are urgently required to be looked into. There is a need to set up integrated waste management and processing facilities or they can be used for afforestation, green belts, biodiversity parks or even buffer zones as such according to in accordance with environmental laws. Even if necessary, the committee says that a part of the bench or the NGT bench says that part of the land could be monetized if the state government so allows. So this is what has been stated. Solid waste management is an important issue we should know. The amount of waste we generate. One is municipal solid waste. There's also other forms of waste like elect electronic waste, e-waste, plastic waste, medical waste. So amount generated is shown here in India. And there are solid waste management rules. Even segregation of waste at source is the most important point. So there are three bins you can see shown here. Green bin is for organic waste, food residue. Red bin is for toilet waste, like diapers, etc. And blue bin is for dry waste. So they have to be segregated and then the, you know, the wet waste can also be used for making compost. So solid waste management rules. Uh, have to be followed. Biodegradable waste can be processed and disposed through composting and biomethanation, which will also reduce the burden on landfill sites too. But that's not happening because uh, segregation of waste, even if it is undertaken, they are all mixed up eventually and uh, it's, it is only landfills which get filled. It's the whole detail given here. So how segregated waste can become compost, can be used in for plants, in gardens. The next is Tiger Trump gets off to a grand start. So this is regarding the first edition of Tri-Service India-US HADR, 
humanitarian assistance and disaster relief amphibious exercise means it will be there on land as well as on sea this is exercise named tiger trump so it got off to a grand start uh, at vishakhapatnam with top officials from both countries resolving to take the relationship india us relationship to the next level it's a nine day exercise been organized of vishakhapatnam and kakinanda coasts so this is the east coast of india then next is india is home to 77 million diabetics so it is said one in six people with diabetes in the world is from india so india is among the top 10 countries from for people with diabetes so it comes at number 2 in terms of number of people which is estimated to be 77 million china leads the list with 60, 116 million diabetics So this is the ninth edition of International Diabetics Foundation Diabetes Atlas, which offers projections that continue to put India at the second slot up to 2045. So what is required? It is said that uh, the health delivery system in India is modeled for acute care rather than for chronic care. So focus should be on prevention. So this requires cooperation from several quarters, including including medical education, health awareness in schools, urban planning, etc. So there is also the concept of, of pre-diabetics. so this is important in prevention you should know because if a person is pre diabetic and he adopts the right lifestyle options to keep his blood sugar lipids and blood pressure under control then uh, a third of developing diabetes a third people, number of people means one third of people can be protected and prevented from developing diabetes so what is pre diabetics also we we'll see so this is the number of diabetic patients in the countries you can see china is number one then comes india then usa pakistan and brazil so this is adult diabetes what is pre diabetes is actually the when you are near the threshold you are not diabetic but you are near it so it's a little more than normal so this stage occurs before type 2 diabetes develops so we'll see types of diabetes too. so blood glucose levels are higher than normal but not high enough to be considered diabetes so this is so there are various tests for this also because diabetics test will give you the details the types of diabetes there is type 1 and type 2 diabetes so type 1 is called juvenile diabetes so it's uh, you know earlier name was juvenile diabetes so it is insulin dependent diabetes diabetes mellitus so it is but it has potential association with other autoimmune diseases and type 2 diabetes is polygenic or influenced by environment so increased incidence associated with higher lifespan and western cultural habits Results in type two diabetes. Then there is gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes is during pregnancy, and some of it may persist even after pregnancy. And secondary diabetes can be because of side effects of medications. So pre-diabetes concerns are sedentary lifestyle, obesity, large waist size, poor diet, age, family history. then this is type 1 diabetes so this is generally you know diagnosed in children so it can be genetic uh, aspect can be a major factor and this is type 2 diabetes means di type pre diabetes developing into diabetes so here in type 1 diabetes insulin therapy is used and in type 2 diabetes you know exercise is required diet has to be improved of course insulin can also be used for some cases and diet exercise is applicable here too then next is terror batters world economy so terrorism has caused a loss of 1 trillion dollars to the world economy and the atmosphere created has indirectly and deeply harmed trade and business is what prime minister narendra modi said at the 11th brics summit in brasilia so he spoke about how terrorism has affected the economy he also appreciated the first seminar which has been held on brics strategies for countering terrorism also the first meeting of brics water ministers will uh, you know he said should take place in india also he uh, he spoke of fit india movement which he has started in india and wanted uh, you know brics to have exchanges in this way and he said that intra brics trade accounts for only 15% of the world trade when the combined population of brics nations is 40% of world population so intra brics amongst the brics nations that is brazil russia india china and south africa trade should increase then next is india and china to hold border talks so india and china have agreed to hold another meeting on matters related to boundary question after prime minister narendra modi met chinese president xi jinping on the sidelines of brics summit in brasilia so 
another boundary question would uh, you know, boundary meeting would take place the last boundary meeting was the 21st round of border talks which took place between the special representatives for india and china with india's representatives national security advisor ajit doval and china's uh, state consul and foreign minister wang yi the two met in chengdu in china in november 2008 so the next round of talks would be held now even at the 21st round both sides had resolved to intensify and advance the dialogue for early settlement of the border dispute so border between india and china has shown here the dispute so here this is china in orange and this is india you are like nepal and bhutan so india's border with china here in jammu and kashmir you can see is uh, disputed in this is pakistan occupied kashmir this part has been occupied this is part of indian kashmir it has been occupied by china after the 1962 war and this is part of kashmir which has been ceded by pakistan to china so that is also where pakistan has given this part of pok to china then uh, the border between india and china is actually through the macmohan line which was a british appointed boundary commission but china does not accept this macmohan line in arunachal pradesh this is also a disputed area so that's the boundary dispute between india and china then next is ceasefire takes hold after gaza violence so a ceasefire between israel and palestinian Pal Pal uh, palestinian militants in gaza took hold after two days of fighting triggered by israeli strike on islamist jihadi commander so 34 palestinians have been killed in this exchange so islamist jihad is uh, called a Pal palestinian militant group and uh, israel's military confirmed the ceasefire which has been brokered by egyptian and un officials who are the usual mediators between gaza and israel so this is the palestinian official said eight members of the same family have been killed in these israeli strikes of the 34 eight of our one family and five children have been killed finally now a ceasefire has been signed so israel had uh, struck targeting the jihadi commanders islamic jihad commanders of gaza so now there is a ceasefire so you should know gaza so this is israel and gaza and west bank these orange color regions are palestinian controlled territories as of 2012 and israel is taking over west bank region too originally it was this we have seen earlier too that sea it is shared between israel and you know, jordan here you know. Lebanon lies up here. This is uh, this is Egypt. So, so even Sinai Peninsula of Egypt was captured in 1967 by Israel, but it was returned to Egypt after the 1979 accord. Even we spoke about uh, recently news about Jordan territories, which uh, are under Israeli control, but now they would be uh, taken back. Even Golan Heights of Syria is under Israeli control. it has been captured from syria in 1967 so this is where so this is gaza where strikes took place by israel and the last news is moody's cuts india's growth forecast to 5.6% so moody's investor service slashed india's growth economic growth forecast to 5.6% for 2019 from 7.4% in 2018 so it said that government measures do not address the widespread weakness in consumption demand so earlier we had seen how earlier in the same in this month only we had seen how moody's had downgraded india's outlook from stable to negative so outlook is negative and now the forecast has also been brought down in october 2019 india's economic growth forecast for 2019 20 was brought down from 6.2 to 5.8 and now next month in november it has brought down from 5.8 to 5.6 This is, it. So it is the downgrade in the forecast shown for 2019 and 2020 for India. So these are growth projections. What it forecasts. So these are the news items. Thank you.